I guess I can take this off. What's up guys, Matt with Bleepin' Jeep. Everything off-road, none of the boring stuff. Well today there might be a little bit of non-off-road and maybe a tad bit of boring. I know a lot of you guys are sitting at home, not a lot of places to go these days, and so today I figured maybe you want to hang out in the shop with me and we'll discuss some things. Let's do it. So maybe you've got some time off of work and you want to ha come hang out. Let's talk about what's going on around here. So first of all, I think the elephant in the room, we need to talk about the coronavirus. I know you've heard it from everywhere else, but let's not talk about the virus. Let's talk about being prepared. How about that? I've seen a lot of stuff on Facebook and Instagram of people making fun of others that are trying to prepare. And maybe you should be making fun of those people who are trying to prepare last minute, but it's definitely not something to take lightly. You should be prepared beforehand, not at the last minute. So people who are making fun of others that are buying toilet paper, it's kind of silly because those are the people that are going to run out of toilet paper. Now you shouldn't do your preparations last minute. You should have had this in stock more than you need for a long time. A lot of people don't seem to understand that it's not the virus that's going to make you run out of toilet paper. It is all the other people who are going to be buying this stuff at the last minute. And uh, not only that, but supply chains that are going to run out. So when I see people on Facebook and Instagram kind of making fun of and poking and saying this is not serious and there's no reason to go out and buy anything. Well now, in the, just within the last couple of days, you're starting to see stores close and you're starting to see limited hours and you're starting to see um, restaurants close down. Uh, every, basically everything, schools are closed down. And just today, Amazon um, stopped. I sell things on Amazon and they sent an email, so you might not know this, but just today they stopped incoming shipment unless they are needed. So everything but essential goods is not going into Amazon now. So all those people who are saying, oh, I'll just buy my stuff on Amazon. Well, you got to think about the big picture here, right? Because Amazon is now not taking anything that is non-essential goods. What does that mean? I don't really know, but for instance, I can't send in my products uh, because they want to help only get out the supplies that are necessary, which is things like uh, hand sanitizer and masks and gloves. And that's great, but if you are in dire need of something, let's say your water line breaks in your house and you can't get the pipe that you need or the fitting that you need, and let's say Home Depot closes down next week, things are going to really start to become a problem. So that's just one side of it. Um, another side of it is the supply chain. If truck drivers start to uh, get sick and if they can't deliver the goods. So I'm not saying this to scare anybody, but I've heard a lot of people on Facebook and Instagram talk about how it's not a big deal. It's, it's not, a, uh, you know, we don't need to run out and buy supplies. The truth is you should have already had your supplies and I'm not a prepper, uh, so I'm not gonna preach prepping. I don't know much about it, but the way that we buy groceries um, is almost like prepping because we live out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, my wife takes care of this. She does a really great job, but she buys a month, maybe a month and a half of groceries every time that we buy. So. We do that because for us to go to the store and back is 30 minutes. So we can't possibly, well, it's 30 minutes one way. So it's an hour travel distance back and forth. So we don't like to go to the store that often. Uh, and it's just easier to buy in bulk and have that stuff that you need on hand when you need it. But 
for me to see people making fun of those people that are buying stuff uh, in bulk, that's the way we buy all the time. So it's almost like they're making fun of, of the way we do it, even though you should have done this way in advance. And you got to think about if things were to go further. So right now it's just minute, right? Uh, the problems that you're dealing with are minute. But what happens if, let's say, the economy takes a nosedive? Well, somebody told me the other day, my job will always be there because it doesn't have anything to do with the coronavirus. Well, if people can't afford to pay their employees, then your job gets cut. It doesn't really matter what field you're in. So you got to think about the big picture. So I'm not trying to say any of this to scare you. I really think that the coronavirus will be weaning off by the time summer comes around and hopefully everything will get back to normal. The market, the economy will get back to normal. Stores will reopen. Um, but you just got to think worst case scenario, right? So if things don't happen, you want to be prepared and you want to be thinking about all possibilities. Like I said a minute ago, Amazon just closed their incoming receiving. So if your business is selling goods on Amazon and that's 100% of what you do, then you just lost your job basically for the foreseeable future. I think they said until April 15th that was going to last for now. They could push it back further. But I'm saying this just to make sure that you know to keep your eggs in lots of different baskets. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Another thing that I've seen people do over the years and even on the news lately is people just think that the police and the government is going to take care of them. And even on the debates the other day they said, well, when you get sick you should just go to the hospital and they'll take care of you. But that's not always the case. I mean, when things get overloaded, they get overloaded. Let's say the police station is overloaded with calls, the hospital is overloaded with patients. When the crap hits the fan, you have to take care of yourself. You can only provide for yourself and you should think like that in the future. I know nobody, nobody ever thought in our lifetime that we would have to deal with a situation like this. And we never have because it's, it's, never, it's never been a problem. But in the past, here in the U.S. and in other countries recently, Venezuela for one, you go to the grocery store and there's nothing on the shelf. And if you do find a loaf of bread, that loaf of bread may be $500. So it's, people, people just kind of, it just goes over their head. They don't think about it. They don't um, pay any attention to it. But our whole system is fine. It's fine and dandy, fine and dandy. And people just take it for granted. But at some point, when something like this happens, you realize just how fragile it is. And if the economy takes a nosedive, things could get crazy really fast. Just consider, the way I'd put it is, uh, you know, everybody kind of made fun of The Walking Dead for being out there and over the top. And it is because they're zombies. But just think about The Walking Dead without the zombies. Like, how crazy it could get if the crap really did hit the fan, and I don't think it will. Um, but I'm just, I'm just saying that's something people don't think about, and it's something that nobody considers um, having to take care of themselves and fend for themselves. And anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. That's enough of the coronavirus. I hope I'm not scaring you. I had all these things in my head that I wanted to say, and then when I turn the camera on and the lights, it's like, deer in the headlights and I don't know what to say. So hopefully um, I didn't scare you and I didn't ramble too much, but let's move on. Let's talk about the Comanche real quick. Um, a lot of people have mentioned in the comments that they want to see me finish building the Comanche, uh, but I guess they didn't realize that the last video that I made on the Comanche, it was pretty much done. All I had to do was uh, a couple finish welds, put some coolant in it and she was out the door. So the next video that you're going to see Jeremy is putting together is from when we went to the winter, the week of wheeling winter games um, a couple weeks ago. 
And that was a great time. We had a blast out there. Basically, the winter wheeling, it's so hard for me to say. Week of wheeling winter games, a lot of W's in there. But what it was, was uh, kind of like an obstacle course in the woods. Uh, you have a map, you have to find certain waypoints, you have to take certain climbs, you get points for doing so, and you have to find hidden things out in the woods. And then we all met at a certain point and we did uh, hatchet throwing, knife throwing, and shooting. And they scored you for that. And then at the end of the weekend, you add up all your points and see who came out on top. So that video is going to be really cool, I think. And that's coming up next. And what else do we have for you guys? We have a new Bleepin' Jeep partner coming on. Actually, two new Bleepin' Jeep partners, a husband and a wife team. If you watched the video of the Bleepin' Jeep Anthem, and that was Pat. And if you noticed, somewhere in there was Amy, and that's his wife. So Pat and Amy are avid Jeepers as well. They're great people. They're really funny and outgoing, and I think you guys are gonna like them. They've started a build. Um, they've got like three Jeeps now, I think, but their latest build is going to be starting on the channel very soon called the Lamazine. They're going to take a Jeep, cut it in half, stretch it, and make, I don't know, why is it called the Lamazine Pat? <laughs> anyway, it's, it's cool. He's got a sketch up of what it's going to look like, but I think you guys are really going to like that. And you know what's cool about Pat? Pat is a singer-songwriter in Nashville. He does country music, although we did a rap video, <laughs> but he can do both. But uh, we're in the talks since uh, this coronavirus. He has not been able to play at bars this week and for the seeable, foreseeable future. So he asked me, hey, would you mind us doing some sort of live um, show on Facebook? So we are still working on the details, but check on Bleep and Jeep's Facebook page and maybe later this week we might have a live concert for you guys. If you're interested in that, it'll probably be Jeep songs and country songs and whatever Pat can provide. He's, he's really good, actually. So what about me? What kind of projects do I have in the works? Well, I'm kind of between projects because I finished up the Comanche, but now we are about to start working on a project. It's kind of a secretive project so far, but I can tell you a little bit. It's sponsored by Pull Apart and Busted Knuckle and I are going to have a build off. So we're gonna buy two different kind of Jeeps, have a budget, and we're gonna build them and compete with them. So that's gonna be something that you guys are really gonna like. And that will be coming up within a month or two, hopefully. And after that, I have some really cool ideas for projects that I wanna do. And of course, I'm gonna be working on just um, shop tips and how to's in between until we come to that. Oh, these birds, they like peck at the foam over there. They're making little nests and homes all over the place. They're driving me nuts. What other news do we have? Oh, we are working on expanding the bleeping Jeep shop here. A lot of times when people come and visit me, actually every time somebody comes and visits, they say, hey, uh, this is cool and all, but it's way smaller than I thought it would be. And that's because it's basically uh, like just a little bit bigger than two car garage in here and I need more room. I've got so much crap and junk and stuff everywhere. I've got a lot of hobbies. I got a motorcycle over there. Um, uh, I'll show you uh, another thing we're working on here in a minute, but we need more room. And so I think what I'm going to do is open up this wall back here, eight by eight, and we're going to build on. So this shop that we're currently in right now is in my backyard and it is uh, 25 this way and 40 this way. I'm gonna open up that wall and build another 35 by 35 building kind of attached to it. And what's cool about this building uh, is it will be taller, so I'll be able to put a lift in there. Now, all this started before the coronavirus, so what I've got going on right now is a uh, on the side of this building right here, I have a driveway that was just put in, and then I leveled up the area in the back back there and put gravel in. Now, 
I'm gonna have the slab poured since we've already started and I want to keep erosion down as much as possible. But after that, I'm gonna take a break and make sure the economy's gonna come back and make sure the uh, everything is good before I spend much more money on this because I just wanna make sure everything's good. Obviously, don't wanna spend money in a recession. So we'll see how that works and hopefully that will be on track when everything gets back to normal. Uh, my plan is to ha uh, just kind of be my own contractor. Uh, I'm gonna have hire somebody, I'm gonna have to hire somebody to do concrete. So if you know anybody that does concrete locally in the Knoxville area, that would be awesome. Um, I need somebody to, I think I'm gonna buy a, a Carolina carport. So it's basically a carport with walls and they also sell, they actually have a, um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I found online where you can build your own like um, 3D and you can turn it and look under it. You can put windows in it, doors, different size doors, different heights, and it's pretty cool. So um, that's my plan anyway. We'll see how that goes. And hopefully that will be happening this summer. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It's kind of a muddy mess out here, but just to show you like where all this is taking place, here is my shop. House is up there, and this is what I've done, is add a driveway. I'll be able to park more Jeeps over here. Yay, just what we need, more parking. The zombie Jeep, by the way, is under there along with my boat, and then the Commander, which everybody asks if I'm gonna build that thing, but the answer is no. That's a two-wheel drive Commander, and there's no reason to build it because I'd have to buy a four-wheel drive one to get all the parts to make it four-wheel drive. Plus, it's uh, it's trashed. I don't know if you can see. But it's in not too good of shape. Plus, it has a gazillion miles on the motor and it does not have a Hemi, so there's that. But back to over here. So this is what I was gonna show you. Uh, still needs a little bit of work yet, but this is gonna be like a driveway. And right here, so this is where my shop ends now, right here there's gonna be a garage door, hopefully like a big one, 12 foot or so. And then a 35 by 35 addition in this area here. And I'll open up this wall and have access to come in either through here or through here, probably put a lift in that corner. Jeremy and I were talking earlier, probably back there or here or there somewhere in there I got to figure out how I want to lay everything out and yeah so that is what I'm working on currently in other news we have started making tabs uh, I've always wanted to get into making more products and I think the easiest thing to start with being a small business is simple products and simplest products. The simplest products you can make are tabs and turns out they're not so simple. But uh, Gary from Ramsey Customs is really helping me out on this. He has another YouTube channel, by the way. If you haven't heard of him, check out Ramsey Customs on YouTube. He's the one who actually made this sign right behind me. And he, he does really good work. Um, a lot of signage and uh, machine work fab work um, and artwork. But uh, after making that sign, I, you know, I've been following his channel for a long time and he just got a laser cutter a few months ago. And so I approached him and we've been working on designing and building tabs and we're starting off with the simple stuff and then working our way up the line and going to make more complicated stuff in the future. We're experimenting with different metals and different types of uh, materials, or actually I should say Gary is. And then I'm getting them and I'm doing the finished prep work. Actually, my wife is helping me out. She's awesome. And it's a lot more than you would think. You know, you gotta look at every piece. Let me show you this actually. That's looking back the other way where we just came from. And over here in the corner, so this is where we've been doing a lot of prep work. Check this out. I have boxes and boxes of tabs. The others are up in the house. So this is just one box right here. 
and it has hundreds and hundreds of pieces in there. And I have 21 of those boxes full of all kinds of tabs. Let me show you. Uh, we've made like a little assembly line station here, and it's much more work than I anticipated to actually get these things to the customer. But my wife and my daughter have been helping me out. And so what you do, first of all, I'm taking the tab and I'm using the air die grinder for right now and making sure all the edges are smooth and finished. And if it needs any sanding, we're putting it on there and sanding it up, depending on the material that it is made out of, because these are all a little bit different. This one is pickled and oiled before it's been cut. So this is a shock tab. And then over here, this is like the photo station. We've got these gussets. And the idea is to have this logo. This is made out of stainless steel. And these are laser etched with where you would drill. And you can either pin those with um, screws or rivets, however you want to do that. And I'll show you what Gary did for us. They turned out really cool. So there's like one on black, one on red. If you're building a buggy or a Jeep or a roll cage, that'd be pretty cool. And I also am gonna use these and I'll do something with these cool. Maybe like put them on a hat, I think is my first idea to have that on a hat. Wouldn't that be cool? And then right here, these are uh, for zip tie tabs. So you weld that on your frame or whatever you need to put a anything really, brake line or something, and then you can zip tie to those. Over here we've got weld washers. These are really awesome. You use these to add thickness to a hole. So let's say you are constantly wearing out this hole or you've worn out a hole already. You just weld a weld washer over the top of it and you fix your hole or if you're just really abusive on your stuff, you can put that on there to start with and you already have a thicker piece of metal. It makes it that much stronger. So we've got all kinds of shock tabs and axle tabs. These are for axles. These are for tubes. You can see the smaller diameter. We have uh, tabs for putting tubes together, like tube clamps. Um, this one would be like for making a roll cage bolt to a frame or something like that. Not, not to a frame, but to a tub. Fish plate, gussets, steering tabs, um, all kinds of awesome stuff. And I designed these to have a different look and feel than most tabs that you would normally find. And then all of these get coated before they go out with WD-40 Specialist Long-Term Rust Corrosion Inhibitor and then they are put in cellophane and then they are put in bags and then of course a sticker goes in every bag. We've got the new stickers by the way. I'll probably put those on the website here pretty soon um, if you're interested in our new logo. And then of course everything has to get labeled and put uh, through the mail. Now my plan is to sell these on Amazon, but as I just told you a little while ago, Amazon has uh, stopped receiving shipments of any non-necessary items. So um, we'll see how that goes. I don't know how long this will be, but uh, it's gonna take a lot of time for me to get all that stuff packaged and uh, labeled and uh, checked and oiled and all that stuff. It takes a lot more time than I had anticipated, but eventually that'll be on Amazon and uh, maybe the store. I'm kind of leaning not towards putting it on the website, on my personal website, because then I have to house it in my house and just having hundreds and uh, eventually, you know, right now I already have 40 SKUs or so and then adding another hundred or so, it's just a lot of, uh, product just scattered all over and uh, I'm still a very small business uh, my wife is, helps me a lot but we're doing this out of basically our living room and so having that stuff uh, take over our house is is not fun but having the addition that we're gonna add back here hopefully that will help and maybe I can have a little workstation in that area or repurpose this area um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna move all my welding equipment over there um, I really don't know how this is all going to be laid out. Um, 
once I get the new shop built, but that will all come in time. All right, so let's do a little question time for you guys. Are you prepared for the coronavirus and what do you guys think of all this? This is crazy. It's unprecedented like everybody keeps saying. What's going on? What do you guys think about what's happening in the world today? And question number two is, what do you guys want to see from me after I get done with the uh, pull apart, busted knuckle, bleeping Jeep challenge? What should be our next project? I know I've already got enough projects going on with the tabs and the shop and uh, just everything in general life, but uh, we need to come up with another project. Um, so what do you want it to be? What should I do? It's up to you guys. So make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Thank you guys for hanging out with me in the shop today. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video, which is going to be a week of wheeling winter games. I got it right that time. Yes. Later guys.